I am absolutely in love with Spain. And I'm not sure, is it the flamenco? Is it the people? Is it the food? I love all of it. It gets me so excited. And you're definitely going to see that on today's show. I'm going to start by making a cold tomato soup called salmorejo. And then I'm going to cook with my student, Joan. And together, we're going to make this fabulous lamb stew with chorizo and white beans and tomatoes. It's so fabulous. And I cannot wait to cook that with you today. You guys could have laughed at that. <laughs> Funding provided by the producers of Grano Padano, Parmigiano Reggiano, and Montazio cheese, Prosciutto di Parma, and Prosciutto di San Daniele. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. By the U.S. Highbush Blueberry Council. These blue-licious food moments brought to you by Blueberries, nature's little blue dynamos. By Village Harvest, offering a variety of authentic traditional rice and grains, variety you can taste. Village Harvest can also be found in the frozen foods department. By Anilon Nouvelle Copper, copper innovation in non-stick cookware. By Cullen App, creating video-based apps for people who love to cook. Cullen App, we bring the chef to your kitchen. To learn more, visit CullenApp.com. Buy remarkable recipes from Blue Ribbon Orchard Choice and Sunmade California Figs. To make this absolutely wonderful salmorejo, or cold tomato soup that comes from the south of Spain, what you have to do is to peel and seed the tomatoes. So I start by removing the core. I use a small knife for this. It really is the fastest. And then if you want, you can also make an X on the bottom. And if you want to do that, you can. But you don't have to because in the water, the boiling water, the skins are going to crack anyway. So it's not that important. But since I started, I'm going to do all of them. I'm going to put these tomatoes in boiling water, and they're going to go in there for 30 seconds. How do I remember that? 1,001, 1,002. No, I won't do that to you, but I am counting in my head. Um, so you just want to let those go for 30 seconds. So I remove these from the water, and I just place those in a water bath. Just have some water with ice cubes, and that's just going to cool them down really, really quickly. If you don't want to do that, it's fine, too. You can leave them on your counter, and they'll cool down. But obviously, they're going to be too hot to touch. <laughs> OK, perfect. How's it look? These cool really, really quickly. So now it's time to peel them. You can see that the peels come off really, really easily. Why do people peel tomatoes and then remove the seeds? The peel is for texture, but the seeds, they're bitter. So that's why people oftentimes will peel and seed tomatoes. And now, make believe the core is the North Pole. We're going to cut right across the equator. Cut this, all your tomatoes in half. Just like that. And let me show you what you don't want to do, and I'll show you why. You don't want to cut this way through the core, and I'm going to show you from the top to the bottom, because that doesn't really reveal the seeds. Look at this, the difference between those two. This reveals all the seeds, so I, I know that I can get rid of them. This, you can hardly see any. So what I do is I cup a tomato in each hand, just like this, and I squeeze the seeds right into the bowl. 
And finally, I hate to lose all that wonderful juice. And also there's a gel that kind of surrounds the seed and that has a lot of flavor. So what I like to do is I take all of this mixture that's in here, the skins, the seeds, everything in the juice, and I just run it right through a sieve. You can just use a spoon to pass the juice through and that gel that surrounds the seeds really has great flavor. Salmorejo always has some stale bread in it. And this is a great way to use up your leftover stale bread. So I like to cut off the crust, but I leave a little bit of crust, and then I just tear this up just coarsely. And don't even think about like the size or whatever because it's all gonna be pureed. And now some garlic, so a nice big clove of garlic. And I wanna peel this. I'm just using a small knife to peel it. But you can just cut this really coarsely because the blender can do the work for you. Also, we are going to add a little bit of sherry vinegar, say about a tablespoon. I'm going to also use some extra virgin olive oil. And you want a good amount of olive oil in there as well as some salt. Now remember that salt and tomatoes, they work so well together, mainly because the tomatoes are very sweet and very acidic, and that salt will balance that. I'm adding some black pepper. Just take a big spoon and stir it together. So you kind of have this, it's like a bread salad. But now what we do is we put this right into the blender. You've got all that wonderful tomato juice that you can also add. Now, if you have a smaller blender, you can do this in two batches. That's absolutely fine, and it will work well. You're going to want to puree that until it's really nice and smooth. Look at that. And it's so creamy. The texture is amazing. Now what I like to do is taste that before I refrigerate it because we want it to be nice and ice cold. That's the whole idea. It's supposed to be a really refreshing soup. So let's see how it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so delicious. Oh, I love it. Sorry. Whack. <laughs> that is absolutely fabulous. It doesn't need any more sherry vinegar. It doesn't need any more salt. It's perfect right now. The only thing it needs is a little bit of time in the refrigerator to really chill it down. It's gonna taste so delicious. Salmorejo is a soup that comes from Andalusia, which is the southern part of Spain. And, you know, I, I didn't see it that much in the United States. I really haven't seen it. And um, I got really excited about it. I loved how excited the Spanish people were about it and then I got the same way, and it's funny. Now, I'm seeing salmorejo everywhere. The soup is now chilled. I have some hard-boiled eggs, and you can see I have them in water. So what I do is I crack the egg all over, and I put it in a bowl of cold water, and then they peel really, really easily. You can even peel them right into the bowl. And look how fast and how easy that is. Great little trick. And the reason this works is because the water goes in between the shell and the egg. And you can see, really fast. Then just dip your egg in so there's no shell on it. And then now we can chop these. I like hard cooked eggs on the top of salmorejo, and that's very traditional too. You want it very coarsely chopped. And this is good because it's giving you a little bit of protein in the soup. It's a very, very typical soup that you would have in Spain in the summer. And now, you just ladle that soup and it's nice and cold and refreshing. I can really smell that sherry vinegar. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of egg on the top. And we also have some cherry tomatoes that are halved. Look how pretty that looks. Just a leaf of parsley would look really nice on the top. This soup tastes absolutely fantastic, especially with a little drizzle of olive oil. Wow, this is delicious. Isn't it good? Yeah, the tomatoes are great. Today, 
on the show, I have a very special guest, Joan Huada. And uh, Joan is a dancer for the San Francisco Ballet. But today, he's going to be doing something completely different. I'm going to be teaching him how to cook. I'll be a sous chef. Yeah, that's great. And you know what we're going to make? You're going to love it. Okay. We're going to be doing a lamb stew with white beans and chorizo. What we're going to do, first of all, is take a little bit of this mm -hmm. olive oil, put some extra virgin olive oil in the pan, probably about it two or three tablespoons. And I've already heated that pan just a little bit. Okay. And Joanne, what you can do is put half of this lamb. Mm -hmm. This is just lamb cut from the leg. Most of the fat is trimmed. We're going to put that in the pan and we're going to brown it. The one thing that you don't want to do okay. is you don't want to crowd the pan. Yes. Because if you put too much in, what's going to happen is it's going to wow. steam. So instead, is that popping a lot? A little bit. I guess the pan is really nice and hot. All right. Give that a stir right away. What you're looking for on the outside of the meat is that really nice caramelization. Now, in the meantime, mm -hmm. I've got another job for you. Okay. And it's to mince an onion. Okay. Keep right. your fingertips up at the top, mm -hmm. just so you don't go through them. Okay, and one more cut. Excellent. Now turn it, cut towards. Okay. A little bit closer. Okay. So because that will make it finer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The beginning of this too is to, to to brown the meat, and it takes a little bit of time to do little by little. You, she just told me that uh, you shouldn't crowd the, the the pan with all the meat at once. So you need to do it by stages, so they breathe and they brown in pieces. So it was quite a good uh, experience. Let's put these onions in the pan uh -huh. as well. Good. Stir that again. And what's going to happen is the onions cook at the same time the lamb does, and it gets really, the onions get nice and caramelized too. Mm -hmm. And they soften. And the onions give a lot of flavor. And now we're going to chop some garlic. Okay. So we have a bulb of garlic. Mm -hmm. We need about three cloves. These are huge cloves of garlic. I think probably two of these monsters well, are going to, yeah. Right. And Thank so you. the way that you can do that, there's a few things. If you mm -hmm. take the side of a knife and go whack, you can do that. But I'm going to show you kind of a fun little easy way to uh -huh. mince your garlic. So first of all, I'm going to peel it. I got like a twin in there. Oh, you do. You have two cloves. <laughs> See, we have th three cloves in the end. I'm going to show you how to mince garlic really fast. If you only have to do one clove, this is a great trick. What I do is I take the back of the knife, see how wide it is mm -hmm. right there? And I take the clove of garlic and I just mash. This is a really big clove. And I mash all the way down the clove of garlic. And if you find that the garlic is big, and like in this case it mm -hmm. is, I'll cut this in half oh, and yeah. I'll show you how fast that is now. And you can see almost instantly You've got, turn your knife over to the mm -hmm. sharp side, and almost instantly you've got a clove of garlic. The, the mincing of the garlic, that was something that I'd never seen. I've been watching a lot of uh, cooking shows, but I've never seen a chef turning the knife around and mincing uh, in, with, in that way. So it was quite something that I just will take with me always. Excellent. Don't feel like you have to go fast at first. Mm -hmm. Just get your technique down. That's great. Okay, he's strong. I wonder if you could pick me up like they do the... Just kidding. We could try. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not after the lambs, too. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So we have to do that. the rest of it, no? Yep. So it is your technique. Yeah. Great. That's incredible. Okay. You got it. It's really, for some people, they have a little bit, um, a little bit harder time trying to get it down. Well, I think um, as a ballet dancer, you, you have to learn a lot of things by watching right. and applying that oh, right away. Yeah. So I think uh, it comes to my benefit right, right. now to see oh, you and just great. reproduce. Right. He learned by watching, and he said, that's how I learned to dance. And I don't think it's that different than cooking, and I think that's why we watch cooking shows. We're just mesmerized by watching people cook, and then you realize you can do it. I mean, no, we can't all dance like Joanne. I don't think, even if we watched. But um, with cooking, I think we can do it. So this is the second batch. Would you stir that again? Yeah. And we're going to add the first batch back in. Mm -hmm. And now, Joanne, would you add about 
two spoonfuls, I'd say about two tablespoons uh -huh. of flour. Okay. And we'll coat the lamb with flour. And what exactly it does to the meat? Uh, what the that's going to do is once we add the liquid, it's going to thicken the sauce. So it'll give us some texture. Another cooking secret. So how often do you cook lamb? This is the first time I cook <gasps> lamb. It's really? A, it's one of those meat that you sort of afraid of messing right. up. Right, and you like it. You I like love it. lamb, oh, yeah, I think that's a really... Good, uh, you're gonna like it then. Okay, toss that together. Strong flavor. So what you're trying to do is mm -hmm. to coat the lamb with that flour now. That looks great. And next what we're going to do is, we've got all that really nice garlic, mm -hmm. so we can add that. Great. You can also add these two, these are fresh bay leaves. Mm -hmm. That has lots of flavor. Mm. I love this. You know how you can really smell bay? Is break it up to like break this. Break it a little bit. Smell it now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the smell of fresh bay. Here you go. Okay. Some water. So we put the whole. Yeah, you okay. can. Let's. I like to take it up to the level of the lamb. So okay. up to the top of the lamb. We can always add more liquid. You can keep going. Yeah. And we've got some tomatoes. These tomatoes are canned, but you can use fresh or canned. And do now they, you know how to peel, seed, and chop tomatoes. Do they have to be peeled, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. So you can add those. And the only other thing is a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and also some pepper. Okay. So let's see. Good. That's it? That's good. And some pepper. This is black or white pepper? That's black pepper. Okay. And you can stir that again. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is bring that up to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, we'll turn it way down and let it simmer really slowly for about an hour. What happens during that time is all those wonderful good bits that we had cooked on the bottom of the mm -hmm. pan with the water and the tomatoes, they kind of soften and they really flavor the sauce, but also the lamb tenderizes. So if you don't cook it long enough, you're gonna have really tough lamb. You wanna cook it long enough so that your lamb gets really nice and tender. Sometimes that can happen in an hour, sometimes two hours, but you really want to come back and check it. Great. This is also another thing to get done ahead of time. If you want to make this stew a day in advance, all you have to do is take it out of the That's refrigerator, true. rewarm it, and you've got a wonderful stew yeah, it was for dinner. Yeah, the next day. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay, see how that's boiling? Yep. Now let's turn it way down. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So you just want to see it just bubbling around the edge. Okay. And you want to watch it every once in a while. You want to come back and look at it and make sure that the liquid hasn't reduced too much because if it has, what you're going to do is add a little bit more liquid to it. And okay? what could happen to the lamb if you cook it too long? It'll be really dry. Dry. It's, so it ends it up moist. being dry. Yeah. So yeah, as soon as you can feel a knife goes in mm -hmm. and there's no resistance, it you know ready. that it's done. Great. It's really easy. You can do it and you can do it too. When I talk about Spanish food, you're gonna see a twinkle in my eye and I'm not sure. Um, I think there's something about the vibrancy. Um, is it the flamenco? Is it the, because I talk about it and I'm very emotional. It's, is it the people? Is it the food? I don't know, I, I love the whole geography. I love being in Spain, I love the wine. And you know, for me, it's just a place that's very close to my heart. I love these beans. They're really beautiful. I, I never seen this color before. Yeah, I could eat these honestly all day long. Could They're they be favorite. eaten raw or? No, only cooked, cooked. only cooked, only cooked. Okay. It's interesting, you know, in the United States we call them cranberry beans. In Italy, they call them barlotti beans. But, you know, you can, for this stew, you could use other kinds of beans. If you wanted to use French butter beans, or, you know, if you wanted to use dried beans, you could even use chickpeas or, you know, navy beans. Um, you know, it's interesting because when you're peeling them, one of the things that you'll notice is, I know we've peeled lots of them already, but one thing that you notice is some of the beans, the ones that are that look worse and are more dry are mm -hmm. easier to peel. They're very easy to open. You know, the Spanish, especially in the northern part of Spain, they love their beans. Mm -hmm. They really love them. So, one more. And I'm determined to get this last one. All right. You can put that into the pan with the lamb. Mm. It's still simmering away. Mm -hmm. And we have this really nice Spanish chorizo. Um, what I'm gonna have you do is cut okay. this into one half inch pieces. Are we cutting the whole thing? Yes. Okay. 
So chorizo is a pork and garlic sausage, and it's got a lot of flavor. I like to use this one because it holds together. If you use the really soft one, it's going to fall apart. So I like this because it holds together. This size okay? Yeah, that's excellent. Okay. So you can see how this one mm -hmm. is really, um, just stays in one piece. You can add all down. of that, and then, can stir it. So imagine the flavor that that chorizo is going to give. And then you've got the wonderful texture of those kind of creamy beans. It'll be really, really good. So bring the lamb up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I can see that it probably needs a little bit more liquid. So we'll just add a little bit of water. Now what's great about this is you add the water, bring it up to a boil, turn it down, let it simmer again, and it cooks for, in about 40 minutes, it'll be done. The lamb will be tender, and you've got this fabulous sauce. It's kind of thickened from that um, wonderful juices from the lamb, and mm, it's really more. great. It's mostly to cover all the beans, yeah. Yes. When I was in Spain, I had this fabulous oil. It was kind of a scented oil that was scented with pimenton and paprika drizzled on the top, so I thought it would be fun to make that. What you can do is take about three tablespoons and put it into that pan. How do you measure three tablespoons just by Perfect. looking at it? Okay. <laughs> well, I kind of go, I just kind of eyeball. Okay. We're going to add a half of a teaspoon of this smell. Mm. It smells good. Smoky. Smoky. Yeah. This is pimenton. Pimenton is a smoked paprika. That'll give a lot of flavor, so a half teaspoon of that. I love pimenton, but you know, you don't want to use too much. Is that enough? Yes. And that okay. oil's warm, so it kind of sizzles. And now you can add a teaspoon, a teaspoon of paprika. And that's a sweet paprika, not hot. I don't think that the, I think you'll have to use this because Double that won't this. fit into the. Okay. So I do two of these? Yes. Okay. With the olive oil, you're really just warming that olive oil and you'll have really nice flavor. I like the oil, I think it's interesting. I would do it with other spices. I think that if you warm olive oil and you add some herbs to it, it takes on the flavor of those herbs or spices or whatever. It really is a wonderful garnish into something, whether it's a soup. You know, sometimes I'll make a cauliflower soup and I'll do a coriander oil. It just takes it to a whole other level. Okay, while I serve the stew, do you want to get some wine? I'll get it. Okay, perfect. I have a fantastic Tempranillo from the Rioja region of Spain, and it'll be really delicious with the lamb and the beans and the tomatoes. And this is also from the north of Spain? Yes, wine? it's from yes. the Rioja, the okay. northern part. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit on yours. Thank you. And a little on mine. Ooh, it smells so mm -hmm. good. It's got that smoky smell to it. Mm. Mm. The stew that I just tasted was one of the most delicious things I've ever eaten, actually. I was like being in, on a Sunday with your grandma and eating a beautiful meal on a beautiful day. The chorizo is incredible. Mm. Oh. Mm. And the oil. Mm -hmm. Nice touch. It tastes so Spanish. Mm. These pimientos are spicy or they're sweet? I know, it's funny. I've had these peppers here the entire class, right? Mm -hmm. All right. They do the same thing in Spain. What they do is they take a little bit of the pepper mm -hmm. and you break it off. You eat a little bit of the stew. Try the pepper. I'll take a bite. Mm. It's delicious. Let's see. Sometimes they're a little bit spicy. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Mm. Fresh. I know, I love, I love the combination. And they really, they'll just, they just put it right here on the edge of their plate, just like that, and they keep taking little pieces. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was fun, really fun to cook with you. It was my pleasure. And you know, it was like we just spent an afternoon in Spain. It was. <laughs> Fue un placer. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> you can do the same thing. Make all these dishes at home and you'll think you're in Spain too. If you enjoyed Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence, you can download for free the Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence Appetizers app for iPad. With this fun one-on-one -on -one cooking course, you can bring Joanne into your kitchen and she'll take you through each step of the recipe.
You can also purchase 24 additional lessons from this series, complete with instructions and videos, for $4.99. Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence Appetizers app for iPad can be downloaded from the App Store. You can visit our website to find and print selected recipes, get information about each episode, learn more about Joanne and the show, see behind-the-scenes photos, provide email feedback, and more. It's all at joanneweir.com. Funding provided by... The producers of Grano Padano, Parmigiano Reggiano, and Montazio Cheese, Prosciutto di Parma, and Prosciutto di San Daniele. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. By the U.S. Highbush Blueberry Council. These blue-licious food moments brought to you by Blueberries, nature's little blue dynamos. By Village Harvest, offering a variety of authentic traditional rice and grains, variety you can taste. Village Harvest can also be found in the frozen foods department. By Anilon Nouvelle Copper, copper innovation in non-stick cookware. By Cullen App, creating video-based apps for people who love to cook. Cullen App, we bring the chef to your kitchen. To learn more, visit CullenApp.com. By Remarkable Recipes from Blue Ribbon Orchard Choice and Sunmade California Figs.